contribution margin, cost, volume, profit, and break-even analysis, unit seven, part two. So in part one, we've got to do the recap like we do after every, in every show. In episode one, we went total revenue equals the total cost and used the all-powerful formula to find the break-even point. Now, in part two, the adventure continues. And we're going to discuss contribution margin and contribution rate to determine break-even volume and break-even sales. Remembering from episode one, or part one, that break-even volume is the break-even point in number of units sold, which is the x-coordinate of the break-even point versus the break-even sales which is the Y coordinate for the break-even point. And we can go from one to the other. So contribution margin per unit, contribute what to where? Well, the contribution margin per unit just represents the amount of the excess or the excess of the sales price over the variable cost that contributes to the payment of fixed costs. And then once it's finished paying the fixed costs, it contributes to profit. So that's what you mean by contribution margin. It's kind of like markup, but not, but not a little bit different. Enough that it's they're not the same, but similar, similar idea. Okay. So we have our contribution margin. We also have this at any. Well, it's the total contribution margin. Well, we take the contribution margin per unit to find total. It means we must multiply by the number of units sold, which is exactly what we do. Contribution margin. We'll be making another appearance in your BCOM world when you draw, dive into Management Science 352 Operations Management and you start talking about constraint management. And you start talking about allocation of resources. A little bit of what we'll do in our linear programming module. Uh, so contribution margin will show up there as well. And so important to keep this in your mind for the future, both the immediate future in this course when you get to linear programming and into the couple of years into the future when you start to deal with operations management, Management Science 352. So ooh, here we're setting the seeds for future episodes. I feel like I work for Disney and I'm milking that Star Wars franchise. So break even volume. Remember volume is the number of units. That is the X coordinate to that uh, break-even point, right? we look at that unit contribution margin. That's a per unit value. Dollars per unit, right? Dollars per unit. Fixed cost is just dollars. So if I have a dollars on the numerator and I divide it by dollars per unit, the dollars cancel each other out. Try that, try that, right? Dollars in the numerator and then divided by dollars per unit and and work it through and you'll find it you can't slow the dollars and you're left with number of units <sighs> exactly what we're looking for here right so break even volume just how 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 many times how many things do I have to sell so that all those accumulated contribution margins add up to the fixed cost right and if you cross multiply you'll see that that break even volume which is X times by the contribution unit contribution margin is the total contribution margin equals the fixed cost. So we can wind that through mathematically and see that relationship from maybe just a little bit of a different perspective. Okay. Contribution rate, kind of almost kind of like markup on selling price, right? If you think of that contribution margin is, is like a markup. It's not quite a markup, but it's like a markup. And it's divided by the unit selling price. So it's just like we did it previously. And so that is sort of how much of the selling price is contributing to the payment of fixed costs and then ultimately to the payment of profit. So when we assume break-even sales, which is in sales dollars, which is the Y coordinate to our break-even point, if you remember the graph, right? we take that fixed cost divided by the rate and we get a dollar amount and you can work that one through to the contribution rates it's kind of like a little trickier it doesn't have units so it's dollars and dollars so it's not as nicely can't really nicely use uh, 
units to, to, to see that intuition, but uh, it functions very, very similarly. All right, let's roll through a question here. Practice question number one. Tina, an entrepreneurial business student, is there really any other type, uh, wants to set up a business completing tax forms for other students. Her price would be $50 per job. Aha, uh -huh. her price, let's get that down. $50 per job, a job is, of course, completing the tax form. Fixed expenses include $405 for the purchase of tax software. Fixed expenses, 405. Which Tina would purchase? Tina would hire some accounting students to complete the forms, paying them for two hours at $15 for each job. Now, it's a little bit, it's implied, but not explicitly said, but the variable cost there, it takes two hours to complete. This is just for one student. So two hours, $15 per hour, and so $30 per job. It's got to be expressed in terms of per job, not in per hour. Okay, because our, our units, the thing that we're selling is these jobs or the tax forms. She would also have paper and supply costs of $5 per job. So that's variable cost one is the $30 per job for our labor. Variable cost two is the $5 per job for our paper supplies, etc. How many jobs would she have to generate before she starts to make a profit? So we want our break-even point in units. That's what we're looking for here. Okay, dokie. So we have a, a couple of choices in how we tackle this particular issue, right? You could still use the all-powerful formula and solve for X, and you'd be solid. But we got a new toy now, and so we'll find the break-even volume in units, right? So that X of the break-even, and our new toy is we have the fixed costs divided by the unit contribution margin. So our fixed costs, as we know, would be $405, and what we really not sure just yet is the contribution margin. Quick little calculation on the contribution margin which we know to be the selling price minus the variable cost, which in this case is $50 for the selling price minus $30 for variable cost one minus $5 for variable cost two. And we get a contribution margin that's equal to $15. And that's gonna be per job as well. Okay. Dollars per job. Minus dollars per job, we still have dollars per job. I just talk in units there. So now we can just uh, roll that all together into the equation and just simply find the fixed cost, $405, divided by the $15, and we get 27 jobs. Right, again, using our, our new toy, um, that formula. You look on the last slide, you'll see a summary of all the formulas from this particular unit, unit number seven. And so we just plucked that out of the uh, our, our mathematical toolbox. Question asks us for break-even uh, volume in units. We look into our math toolbox. We see break-even volume in units. We pull that out. We plug in the relevant values. We solve the problem. Okay. Somewhat very, very clean cut that way. It's very nice. All right. Look at question number two, a little less clean cut. So question number two, Warbug, Warbug, bleh, Warbug Inc. makes and sells water bottles for students. Financial projections for this line of product are revenue of $238,000, total variable cost of $41,840, and fixed cost of $18,000. Answer each of the following independent questions, okay? So that just means whatever you solve in one question doesn't impact the other questions, okay? But we're all going to use that basic first paragraph to solve all the parts, okay? And there's four parts to this question, three of which I'll do, one of which you'll do. What are the total contribution margin and contribution rate? Well, we have a formula for total contribution margin, right? So question number two, and that total contribution margin, and I just look inside my mathematical toolbox, 
and I see that, that is the contribution margin selling price I apologize I use s and SP interchangeably uh, but they mean the same thing just to refer to differently in different chapters and just trying to create a, a context or a, a link between the, the SP that we talk about in unit seven and the S that sometimes some textbooks talk about in other units they, they mean this, they're the same thing okay. so anyway the idea is contribution margin times by the, the total sold so what's our contribution margin in this case we're looking at the total contribution margin so if I multiply these through what do I have Right. So let's say I just multiply that x into the brackets. That contribution margin equals to SP times by x minus VC times by x. Right? Simple low-level stuff. What do we know about this uh, sales price times by x? We know that to be the total revenue. And what do we know about the variable cost per unit times by the number of units? We know that to be the total variable cost which fits the information that we have. Okay, so sometimes we've got to be a little bit flexible. If we don't have per unit values, which we do not have in this particular case, we then got to go into our math toolbox and see, okay, I got I to gotta deal with revenue. How can I change that formula to revenue is in there? Ah, right, if I multiply that X through the brackets, I see that, right? And that just comes with familiarity with knowing how the relationship work and doing the practice and do practice problems, whether it's the practice problems I provide or practice problems that you get in, in any business math textbook. So when we go to do that, we get our total revenue, which is $238,000 minus the total variable costs of $41,840. And we get an answer of $196,160. So the math, I mean, the, the, the calculation, pretty straightforward, right? But understanding the relationships, given that we don't have per unit values, how does that relate to this, the, uh, the tools I have in my mathematical toolbox? That's the important part. Okay. Contribution rate. And that is... Now we think about in our statistical toolbox, or in our mathematical toolbox, I teach stats too as well, by the way. Um, we have contribution margin over that selling price, right? Now, I understand a little bit of math here, and I understand if I multiply that by x over x, because I know I have a total contribution margin. And a total contribution margin is the unit contribution margin multiplied by x, right? This numerator. But if I multiply the numerator by x, I got to multiply the denominator by x, otherwise I've, I've changed this relationship. And so if I'm multiplying by x over x, I'm good. And so what does that equal to? Well, it equals to the total contribution margin. And what's the selling price times by x? That's total revenue. Well, I got all that. And so ultimately, this equals to the 196,160 I have from before divided it by the 238,000 that's given to me in the question, and I get 0 0.8242, okay? And again, all comes from understanding the relationships, contribution margin, I see, I see it in the numerator, but I don't have a unit contribution margin, I have a total contribution margin. How do I link the two? I multiply the contribution margin by x. But then I realize that if I multiply the numerator by x, I must also multiply the denominator by x. So I do that. And what do I notice about that relationship? It's the selling price times by the unit sold. And that gives me total revenue, which is a value that I have. All very convenient to us. All right. Let's go on to the next part. How much does the product line... How much of this product line does the business need to sell, sell to break even? Okay, so sell, how much? That's talking sales dollars here, okay? So we're looking for the break even in sales. Not tell how many units, none of that stuff, just how much. That's, usually that means dollars. Okay? And we look in our math toolbox and we see that's the fixed cost divided by the contribution rate. 
Conveniently enough, I found the fixed car. I, the fixed cost is stated to us as 18,000. We found the contribution rate in the previous question with 0 0.8242. And I just plugged that in. I get the $21,839.36. Okay. Very little pain in that one, right? Let's go into part C. Part C, if the business was to save $6,000 in variable costs by offering fewer colors of, the, colors of the water bottles, how much of this product line does the business need to sell to break even? Now, variable costs are part of our contribution margin calculation. So that's where that's going to show up. So when I look at my total contribution margin, that equals my revenues, which appears to remain unchanged. $238,000. I subtract from that my variable costs, which have changed. All right, I'm going to put this in brackets. I started off with $41,840, but I'm reducing that by $6,000. Okay. So I just make sure to keep that in brackets, and the brackets are very important in this one. Okay. And my total contribution margin then will be the $238,000 minus the new variable costs of $35,840, and that'll equal to $202,160. So that's my new contribution margin. So I will then take that amount, because we're asking how much again, and how much, when I think of how much, that means my ultimate goal is to find a break even in sales, just like I did in part number it be okay so this is my ultimate goal but i realize that my ultimate goal of finding the break even sales requires me to find the contribution rate contribution rate requires me to find the total contribution margin so i'm sort of working a little recursively the fancy word for saying just working backwards to f to solve this particular problem okay but nevertheless it's the same as b but i need to find the things from that i found it like a um, in order to make B work. So C really encompasses A and B together. And, and so now I'll find the contribution rate the same way as I did before. 202,000 total contribution margin divided by the total revenue. So that uh, I stayed constant. Total contribution margin 8.49. And then ultimately, I'll find the break even in sales, which is the fixed costs, which have not changed, of $18,000, uh, divided by the contribution margin. And now I get a new value of $21,191.14. Okay. Again, it, C is just, uh, I made an adjustment to uh, variable cost. Once I did that, that means the contribution margin changed. So I had to rework the entire problem as I did in part A and part, and then ultimately use that info in a part B-like calculation to find the break-even in sales, and then get my ultimate resulting answer. All right, awesome. Now, this one I'm going to leave for you as a quiz. If the specialized logo was printed on the water bottles, the variable cost would increase by 5%. Oh, get to use a little bit of chapter unit 3 stuff. And the fixed cost would increase by 15000 So now that fixed cost has changed from 18000 Would increase by. Right? Remember in the really picky... Uh, comprehension words that we had in unit number three. Buy means it's fifteen thousand dollars more, so fifteen thousand plus the original eighteen thousand. Okay. Very important little preposition there. If the price of the water bottles was then increased by ten percent, so the sales price now is up by ten percent. What would be the resulting income? Whoa! Guess what? Income. We have one formula for income. It is the all-powerful formula. So use the all-powerful one formula that binds them all. Find the answer to this particular part.
Good luck. If you have any questions, of course, you can always email me uh, and we can work it out.